What is the mighty boosh? It's kind of uh, furry. It's a way of life. It's daft. It's a mental place. It's a cardigan, isn't it? What did Dave say? A fizzy nightmares. The raffle. Surreal. It's one big ring, a ring of truth. There is no reason for the boosh, it just is. It's a love affair. A lot of hard work. You know the stuff down there for a woman? I'm describing the boosh in one word. Ow! We don't know what it is. What was the question again? Enjoy the show. Come with us now on a journey through time and space. To the world of the magical. The Mighty Voosh is the brainchild of two comedians, Julian Barrett and Noel Fielding. We're trying to build up a world of people. It's quite difficult to sort of get your head around when you first watch it. I think a lot of people just go, it seems like there's a lot of rules that they don't quite know. How did Vince uh, work in a rundown zoo? and they find it pretty boring much of the time. Uh, that's why they end up going off on adventures. I suppose our mints are probably 10% exaggeration. My name's Howard Moon and this is Vince Noir. All right. Noel and Julian are pretty similar to their characters. Noel is slightly brighter than Vince and Julian is not quite as clever as Howard. What? Come on, calm down, look at you. What? You lack a brandy snap. Yeah, that's my style. What, the brandy snap? Yeah, the crunchy tube. When we first used to write, we just thought, oh, let's be ourselves. I was obsessed with clothes and, you know, stupid haircuts. Look at me. My hair's virtually a hat. All hats suit me. Jim was always sort of going Just with jazz and Nabokov and playing Hamlet. How? Quite small eyes. He's in a trance, a jazz trance. Every day he does this. <laughs> I was always obsessed with sort of retro furniture and Mick Jagger. Pop. Now, weirdly enough, I've realised that I'm a bit more like Julian and he's a bit more like Vince now. We're a bit like, there's a crossover. OK, you know what we're doing, yeah? Yeah, a tight electro pop classic. No, we're doing jazz funk. What? We did electro last week, we're doing jazz funk this week, OK? Hey, dungheads, let's move it along. Bob Fossil is, uh, he's largely an American. He's, uh, he's bordering on retarded. Suck on that subsection! Bob Fossil isn't a character who really does quiet. He tends to be loud and angry and preferably dancing. But there's a lot of intelligence to him as well. I mean, he knows how to eat. What are you doing? <laughs> they didn't have any sandwiches. A little bit of Bob Fossil lives in all of us. I'm basically what you call a hair actor. I act with my hair and I f go with it. This is my chance to form a little pulpit uh, around Bob Fossil. <laughs> if you look at the buttons here, Dave, it says French Ecole Militaire. I wear it to clubs and stuff. I get laid a lot. I want you to be really careful. Here he comes. Get the gate. Welcome, my Bainbridge. Dixon Bainbridge is the most self-satisfied character in the show. He owns the zoo. He's an explorer, an adventurer. He hang glides places. He generally likes to arrive in a rocket or preferably with some kind of handgun or rifle. Ah! Nothing to worry about. I'm sorting things out here. And he kicks Fossil in the balls. On behalf of... Oh! 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 The nut! I only really became involved with the Bush because Richard Aowadi, who had played Dixon Bainbridge, I believe, in the pilot and on radio, couldn't do the part because of uh, he was under contract with Channel 4. So I put on the wig, you know, put on the tash, stepped up. Bainbridge, I'll just take that, have a piss and be off. So he changed physically mm. from a tall, thin, black man to a small white man. <laughs> it was a little confusing. We never mentioned the show. So we just pass over that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So in 
the second series will be played by a huge ginger woman. Naboo, are you in a trance? No, I'm listening to Fleetwood Mac. Mike's great in the show because he's incredibly natural and he's certainly the most laid-back performer I've ever come across. He's always like quite charming and, you know, quite smiley. It's probably because he's stoned a lot. Where's my frog? You smoked it last night! Oh, yeah. They write these little ideas and they go, oh, that'll be good for Naboo to end on. It is magic dust. What is it, a Muppet? But he does like to have a hooker in scenes whenever possible. That's with A.H. rather than hooker. He doesn't like, I, he might, he probably, I wouldn't like to say. Come with us now on a journey through time and space. Here come the bush, the mighty bush. 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 <laughs> How do we want the show to look? A bit like The Wizard of Oz, didn't we? Or Sinbad. Mm. Mm, but modern. We're getting beats. there now. I mean, it's, sort of, it's a long process of, sort of figuring out what works, what doesn't, you know. What we wanted to do differently from the pilot was try to make a more theatrical, less realistic look for the show. And um, our designer, James Dillon, I think did that absolutely brilliantly. Uh, what we're doing here is we're building a secret laboratory for this week's show and we're reusing some of the ice cave uh, as part of the set. So it's being repainted now and cut about to fit into that set. The zoo itself is not really very big at all, it's about 10 metres square, but because of the way he's designed it with lots of corridors going around the back, there's always some depth and there's always some background. We wanted to make everything look like it had been shot in the studio. So if we went to a forest, instead of going to a forest, we brought a forest into the studio. So you've got to do a load of rigging on the top and do a big canopy for all of the jungle. A really dedicated team in costume and makeup to make the bush work on TV. I don't think about costumes or drawings ever, and then when we come to do the show, I really enjoy drawing little funny costumes, and I think I can actually do this. I'd love to do this for a living. It all draws the things, mm. and I just do my version of it, and we kind of work out between us, and it works out really well. We work out how to do the makeups really. At the same time as, as they're writing it, because quite often the boys will tell me about the characters before they've actually written the script, just the ideas of who the people are, what kind of people they are. Now, with the costumes and the, and the makeup, we have like a, almost like a code. You go, you know that sort of shrunken head look with the sort of eyes and it's got to have a polo. The hitcher wears a giant polo bin for an eye and the henchmen have got them too. And there are various costumes. It's just, it's just that's a repeat pattern, a wee motif that just runs through the whole thing and I quite like that because it, it just gives it a, an identity. It's quite weird because it was the sort of thing that a lot of the reviewers seem to mention all the time really sort of weirdly struck a chord with people. They go, you put polar, why is, what's happening? Why have you done that? Slightly freak people out. The props and the um, costumes that Noel and Julian used to make and we all kind of put together were just genius. That's why it's difficult when you go from live to TV because then you've got people making all these wonderful props for you. And I almost I think there was a problem, first of all, that people were making them like too nice, too real, too polished. And they were like, no, can you rip off all that really realistic skin and stick pink gaffer tape on instead? Something you go, I want it to look a bit raggedy. Yeah. That raggedy, that rip of uh... Yeah, and they know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Welcome to the Mirror World! Because some of the characters are so um, fantastical, it's not, it's not normal makeup, you know, you can't do it with makeup. And I have to start thinking about visits to B&Q. My name is Mr. Susan! And now it is time for you to do the choosing.
made it, it was all made of J cloths and things like that. So I just took one of those J cloths and stuck them straight onto Julian's face. And bits of leather, it's a chamois leather, and just shaped them slightly so they looked like features. I work quite quickly, really, I think, compared to most people. You know, I paint with a wide brush. And also, I get a bit bored <laughs> talking to them for too long. <laughs> so I get them out of the chair fast. Can I get the, uh, the escallop? Of course you can. With, um, with stir fried veg? There were mornings sometimes when uh, Noel would arrive on set and you just wouldn't recognise him. He was completely, you know, transformed into the hitcher or the spirit of jazz. <laughs> the green man. <laughs> Coming in strong like a freak show nightmare. I made his nose more like that and his chin even more like that, so he was like the man in the moon and made him green and wrinkly. And uh, it just looked evil, absolutely evil. I have a son like you, a lot younger than you. Young gentleman, not you. But uh, unfortunately, I had to hurt him. I had to feed him the blackberries. Because he wasn't disciplined. And I know it was my fault. It was my wife. She was too soft on him. <laughs> Painted a white stripe on his face and stuck on a pole, but don't ask me where it comes from. <laughs> That's what we did. Don't kill me. I ain't gonna kill you, mate. I need a sprinkle, you onion. Oh, tell us what you're doing today. Playing a cobra. Yeah, and mutants know had to be a snake at one point, and because I'd had so much to do, I left this at the last minute thinking it was going to be simple, and it had to be simple in the end, because it was that morning, and I had to run over to Tesco's and buy some lovely American tan tights and stretch them around a coat hanger and paint them and stick some contact lenses in his eyes, and, and he acted to the rest of it. <laughs> Feel some uh, jazz, Rick James style. Chicka chicka, ow, ow! Man, my hat's on fire! What's wrong with you? Are you blind? Why didn't you tell me? Sorry, I, th I thought that was your look. It's funny how things evolve. He wanted this hat that was on fire, and the health and safety people wanted to know if anything else going to put on his face was going to be flammable. And I'd thought about making him a, a prosthetic sort of skull thing, very angular, because uh, he wanted to look skull like. But all the, every adhesive is, I suppose, flammable to a certain extent, and we just wanted to keep it simple, so I just ended up painting his face. Again, keeping it simple seemed to work better than something fancy. You would do this for me? <laughs> the Ape of Death was great to play. Look at me, I'm confident and feel strong and sexy. The Ape of Death was a lovely character to do, really lovely character. Um, and and Rich's game for all these things, he just, you know, he just changes, he's like a chameleon. I've done uh, Bambi, Shakespeare in the Park. This is by far the toughest. Requires emotion and all the other stuff that actors do. Howard Moon, you are to be thrown into the pit of eternal flames. Rich Fulcher, who started to be a lawyer, is now dressed as the ape of death. But Bolo led a clean life. Yeah, but you bombed that fox. That's just a rumor. One of the storylines was that Howard uh, kept bombing a fox. Hi, right, Jack. Get away from me, right? We Jack really liked Jack Cooper as a character, I think we wanted him to yeah, be a main Jack. character. And so Howard and Vince went into the forest. Deeper and deeper. Oh, the danger they were in. We couldn't find the right voice. We tried everyone. Yeah. Everyone. Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. Who else did we tried? Randy Newman. Pete Townsend. Um, we tried everyone, didn't we? Mm. Get away from me, right? And then this guy in the edit had a real sort of Glasgow accent. And he, uh, he became Jack Cooper. Cooper's a tease. Everyone's had Cooper. I've had Cooper. <laughs> have you? Yeah. You, Cooper and Jagger have a threesome. I was on a religious retreat. <laughs> he had a super duper pooper, that Cooper. <laughs> oh, great. That was a sweat fest, man. Come on, man. I was sweating my dick off. And... Action, Alec. <laughs> I'm the ape of 
There's a lot of music in the mighty bush, mm. isn't there, Julian? Mm. You're responsible for quite a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. Music is my... It's my mother, my father. We do these funny little songs, don't we? Like, um, mm. Got My Llama Down, that one. Oh, yeah. Got My Llama Deep Down. In the ocean blue like a barnacle Sitting in a tight place Laughing like a monkey arm Pulling like a china boy Cut away, cut away, cut away Noise, boing, chicka Masala, boing, chicka Masala, oh Tooth, tooth mm. It's usually when we're really tired we do them, isn't it? And we can't yeah. be bothered to speak. I am a summer funner. I am you are a summer suit. I am a crew of tongue. Jump inside, jump inside. Play uh, a lot of medieval and toe pipes. Um, a lot of I live play instruments. Moroccan bell shoes. The face as well you play, don't you? The human face. Human face. Yeah. Um, you can get a lot of interesting sounds out of someone's face. Yeah. Who do you use for that? Um, Bill Oddy, don't you? Bill Oddy, yeah, he's got a good sort of... He uh, lies down the few, lies he? down, I sort of whack him with a, an oar. I think Electro was probably one of Noel's favourite episodes to film because um, although he has no problems with his sexuality whatsoever, he quite enjoys playing a man-lady. I am Electro. In case you're wondering, the crowd in Electro are all friends of Noel and Julian's and they are all providing their own clothes. <laughs> Howard's clothes didn't come off several times in a row, which was a bit of a shame. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> the seams loosened in my trousers. Okay. Nine, five, eight, take one, guide track. So, Paul, you just say OK, I'll get an action to start with, you say OK, and then I'll count down. Here we go. Three, two, one, go! Three, two, one, go! When we're rehearsing, we use uh, Paul King as our director, and uh, he's got an unusual style of directing, hasn't he? Yeah. Just in tight swimming trunks. Mm. He's got a sort of baton, an electrical baton, if you get things wrong. Hi, I'm Howard Moon. Welcome to the zoo. Um, this is Vince Noir. He's my assistant. Ooh. Um, where it pops up there, it's a nice little touch. Paul King, the director. When we're rehearsing the shows, Noel and Julian are starting from the blue print of what they've written in the script. They've got a start point and a finish point of the scene and normally they've got two or three things that they have to get in there. It's and quite loose. We let people just yeah. do what they want really. Rich never says what we ask him to anyway so we've given up yeah. trying to write lines <laughs> for him. Hey Vince, nice day. You think you could fix me up like that? No problem, eh? Moon, I want to see you in my office. Pronto. ASAP, monkey boy. A lot of it's very visceral. Uh, Instinctual, uh, suso, if you may, kundisara. When we film it, obviously, you have you've gone through a lot of the options, but you, there's some elements of it that you keep loose. Say like Rudy's name. <laughs> no way, that has got me hot. Love action. <laughs> some call me nose. He has a nose. <laughs> some call me radar. Some call me Mark. <laughs> Call me oxygen. Call me Jonah. I don't know. 
That's the, the top shot. Job. Eaten by wolves. By what? Wolves. Wolves. Yes. <laughs> Who are you? I go by many names. Well, what are they then? I'm getting round to that in my own good mystical time. Friday. <laughs> I'm going clubbing. I'd been known to sing and dance about town quite a bit, so they uh, they decided to utilise that wherever they could. I kind of somewhat unwittedly became the bouche choreographer. <laughs> With all the dance kind of routines, they were it was mainly just you know Julian had given me a CD a couple of weeks previous and. I'd be getting into it and kind of try and have an idea of some stupid, ridiculous moves that we could do. That were just kind of, I don't know, we were either inspired by the character or the music. Mod Wars, again, like another kind of instance of ridiculously hot difficult costume which none of us could breathe in. We couldn't see a thing in their masks and we were having to face front and do all these kind of dance moves that I'd worked out. You can rehearse them in your jeans and a and a t-shirt when you've got a three-piece suit and a, a ridiculous mod wolf head on. It's, uh, it's a different kettle of fish but I think it looked all right in the end. <laughs> Me and this apple. This is fucking magic. I think it's brilliant. This is for Beyonce. This is where the gold is, mate. Me and an apple. We had uh, the rights to this music called I Don't Like Cricket. And, uh, and so I just said, why don't I dance to this for a little bit? Did it right. I saw four faces, one man. Believe it or not, I didn't have a choreography for any of that. I like to dance. I guess I'm an exhibitionist. And that's why I don't like cricket. Rich has been dancing for a long time, mostly in that style. He is single. Testing a sort of thriller thing. song, weren't we? Yeah, we wanted to do something a bit like thriller, you know, like yeah. a sort of breakdancing mutants. I actually gave myself an incredible forehead lino burn when I did that swan dive as the mutant in Mutants. But uh, it was one take, you see, they only had one take, end of the day. It's a terrific windmill, I gave it me all on my head. So I had like a massive, like, Lino burn across my forehead for a week. Look ridiculous. Things you do for the bush. Charlie's a funny episode, weird episode for us, because it was our sort of least favourite, <coughs> but quite a lot of our, the fans of the bush quite like it. And they always go, I like Charlie. Charlie, 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 Charlie. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. The Charlie animation is genius. In the summer of 1976, on his way home from an Alice Cooper concert, Charlie started to melt onto the pavement. A friend of mine from Art College, Nigel Cohn, who's got, and he's... Uh, he's part bear. His partner, Ivana Zorn. They do, they've got an animation company called Nipple. So when they came to write the uh, first series, they just wanted to include some. They wanted one every episode, but it was just physically impossible. Because I, I went to Art College, I actually... I love it. I'm obsessed with little stupid drawings. That's me as a cowboy, as a man. I was only seven when I made this, but that was a premonition of me as an older man standing in this office with you now. I think the good thing for him was seeing his drawings come alive because he does, he, you know, he draws naturally. Well, as far as Charlie, Noel gave us um, sort of, I think it was about half a page of text 
and then we went through it, storyboarded it, put in some visual jokes, like silly little jokes. Then again, gave Noel the, um, a list of things to do. He did the key characters like Charlie, Eric Phillips. The two guys who walk across the front, and there is, that's his dad and his uncle from the 70s. Just a few other key characters, and then uh, Ivana did the rest, really. Ivana drew, drew everything else around it, and then I put it together on the computer. But it was pretty cut and paste, um, and then Noel did the final voiceover, and that was it, really. So Ferry was a bit like make it up as you go along. I loved hanging out with Ferry. Oh, we used to go hunting, fishing. We lived in a small house made out of bus tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I knew that the the final episode was going to be a bit moodier and a bit darker, so we wanted to do it um, much darker, whereas Charlie's all bubble bubblegum colours. The title sequence came directly from the music because the text come with us now on the journey through time and space. The original idea was to have this army of bush characters walking down a road led by Noel and Julian, and then they go into the zoo, but it was a little too ambitious. <laughs> So we were sort of inspired by Noel's drawings. Um, so we just got our felt tips out really and started drawing lots of characters that he'd given us. Cowboys, peppermint cowboys, polos, monkey heads, yeah. hitcher, all, the, all these, all, all elements these from symbols. the show. When people actually find the bush, when they discover it, I think most people really love it. Um, just because it's silly and um, there's not a lot of that on TV these days and I think um, Noel and Julian are, are filling a huge gap in the market. A lot of people are scared of silly stuff. Mm. Uh, it's difficult to pull it off because you know if silly's done wrong it's then it becomes wacky which is un oh. in terrifying. You don't want to be wacky. It's solely their vision and you've really you've really got it's really hard to match their sort of standards it's difficult to get that silliness right you know it's what we want to try and do is something to be very stupid I mean, it's not particularly surreal in a way a lot of the stuff we do a lot we get branded as surreal but no um, it's a sort of logic, logic to everything it's not actually uh, say the, the the real sort of surrealism which i love but it isn't really i mean there's elements no. of that in it but it's a lot more logical but if it was than that, really you know. surreal it'd be sat inside someone's leg I have some washing up to do, so is there any way I could... Yeah, thanks. Right, I'm going to start. You had enough of something. I can't move, I'll breathe. I'm fine for another three or four hours if you want. For magic, eh, Dave? You're not getting any magic here. <laughs> I'm turning this off. Turning off the magic now, Dave. 